67 years ago, the network asked our station to create a live national remote broadcast from the base of the Wasatch Mountains, including a full choir, as part of a spectacular New Year's Day broadcast coast to coast. Well, as Utah's first TV station, Channel 4 had already been doing live remotes for eight years, and our engineers were ready. Craig Worth shows us the rare footage. It's tonight's Worth Watching. It was New Year's Day 1956. America's major cities would wake up to a live television gift. It would be one of the most ambitious projects ever attempted in the early days of live TV. That TV gift would be available to all of America, and it would consist of over 100 people standing here in these foothills, all singing Handel's Messiah at the precise moment the sun peeked over the Wasatch. Channel 4's remote truck and six cameras would attempt to do what had never been done before. Our engineers would microwave the picture across the valley to our transmitter in the Ochre Mountains. And from there, a series of microwaves would carry the signal to New York City. Television legend Abe Garraway started the broadcast as America welcomed New Year's 56. Salt Lake was ready. The sun had just broken over the mountains. It was time to go. So a new year has started, and we all hold in our hands this leap year, 365 more days, to match the one that we're letting slip into eternity with every passing second. Rest and be a bystander on a Utah mountainside, through the words of Handel's Messiah, a chorus crying out to the open sky, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. The world-famed Salt Lake City Oratorio Society on New Year's Day, 1956. Of course, cameras were primitive, and you are watching what was called a kinescope. A film camera recorded what was on the TV screen as a memory for us. For time reasons, we can't play the whole broadcast from that morning. But we can tell you it worked. Six cameras, the remote truck, our crew from Utah's first TV station, and a gift to America that New Year's Day. Craigworth, ABC 4 News. Well, it looks like it was partly cloudy on January 1st, 1956. Uh, yeah. Unlike 2023, which has been uh, rainy and snowy here in the Beehive State. Boy, it's been awesome, uh, Rick, just to have all the moisture that we've had. And Mother Nature is going to continue to provide uh, with what, what we really need out there is mountain snow, some valley rain. I think a lot of folks still want some snow even here in the valleys where it's just January. Oh, beautiful shot. This one from Scott Taylor of the Bear Lake Valley. Look at the lake. Just beautiful uh, with, again, some of the clouds out there, the snow in the mountains and the uh, Bear, uh, Bear Lake Valley as well. Uh, a winter weather advisory has in fact been issued for that region along with our mountain areas in northern, central, and southern Utah. This goes into effect tomorrow. So this is ahead of our next storm system. It's going to be another mountain snow special essentially. Uh, valleys uh, seeing primarily rain as again this uh, system is coming in from the central Pacific. So it's tapping into subtropical moisture making it a milder system. So starting at 5 o'clock tomorrow through 5 o'clock on Wednesday, 
mountains could see 6 to 14 plus inches of snow in the northern mountain areas, uh, the upper cottonwoods, uh, the Uintas, western uh, or so the uh, central Wasatch could see 10 to 20 inches or more of snowfall. Central southern mountains 6 to 12 inches and 2 to 6 inches of snow generally in the western Uinta Basin, which is included in the winter weather advisories. Now, I would be surprised, of course, tomorrow if those are upgraded, at least some of those two winter storm warnings, especially for the uh, central Wasatch, the upper Cottonwoods, some of the Uintas, expecting to see some heavy snowfall as, again, this swath of moisture, which is going to slam the Sierra Nevadas with feet of snow, uh, makes its way into the Beehive State. So moisture comes in mainly late morning, early afternoon on timing on that. Mountains, again, seeing snow shower. Snow levels will climb to about 6,000, even 7,000 feet or hover right near there, which is right about Park City elevation. We're expecting it to stay all snow in Park City as the moisture does move through. This is Monday evening. You get a bit of a lull in active weather Mon or excuse me, early Tuesday into the afternoon before this next system pushes through. This is kind of a two part system as it moves inland. Wraparound moisture, northwest flow into Wednesday morning could generate a little snow for the lower valleys, but for the most part, this will be a uh, widespread rain event for the valleys. Mountains again seeing snow a and again, feet of snow are expected to pile up. We talked about some of the amounts. How about rain? Should see a good quarter uh, of an inch, maybe half of an inch of moisture. Now, this particular model doesn't run through the entire event, but showing roughly a half of an inch of moisture in, in Salt Lake City, uh, about that in, Pro, in uh, Provo and in St. George, maybe even more so. I wanted to show you real quick with Futurecast just how much snow is expected to hit the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, again, this uh, particular legend goes up to 72 inches, possibly more than that. Again, for us, it could be a good foot or two in some of our northern mountain areas as well as we get into midweek. For St. George, 50s expected in the forecast. Plan on showers through early Wednesday. Partly cloudy skies. Mid 50s are expected through the end of the week, the weekend. The Wasatch Front again. Rain expected off and on for tomorrow. Filling in throughout the afternoon and evening. Rain on Tuesday. Rain snow showers early Wednesday. And then we'll see partly cloudy skies as high pressure builds in for the end of the week. Guys.